una ciudad pequeña. Oh my God, yeah, first, when, I, when we were first opening, the number one question was, is, what is a bodega? No one knew, you know? Now everyone's saying the bodega, like they know now. You know, bringing the culture where Atlanta was not familiar with this concept, and the fact that we got to introduce it in a, in a positive way by having healthy food, because traditionally, Bodegas are corner stores that have unhealthy food. So that was the kind of idea is to have this garden, this place where it was natural. So just the, the introductory to those things, to Cubanos, you know, just traditional espresso and things like that that they never had before. So it's, it's really cool to be able to bring those traditions here. And people love it. I wasn't sure. I was taking a chance. I felt in my heart that they would love it, but I wasn't, you, you don't know until you actually do it. And when I did it, I was like, oh, they love it. Like it was exciting because people loved it. Or they wanted to know like our menu is in Spanish and English, but a lot of words are in Spanish because I wanted to make sure that anyone that just spoke Spanish could easily know where stuff was. And they're learning Spanish words, things like that. It was very important to me. And I feel like it's a, it, people embracing each other in different ways. And I happen to be doing it from the Puerto Rican, Cuban, you know, diaspora because we are so culturally mixed. As someone from Puerto Rico, you know, we're Tainos, we're Africans, we're Spaniards. So we're already such a melting pot that makes what we are. And to be able to share that with the world in such a space like Hans, it's a blessing. It's a really big blessing. You know, it's, it's very important. It's special to me. The fact that I can have mofongo and coquito and cafe con leche is, it's, I see the impact when people come in, for them to be able to see flags, for them to be able to see how proud I am of my heritage. And just historically, Puerto Rican flags weren't allowed to be shown in, in, in New York. People were getting 10 years in jail in my grandfather's era, so it's a really big deal. You know, it feels revolutionary because I love my culture. Everything I do, I'm inspired by it, and I really want to share it with the world. One thing that is, is special and different about Atlanta right now is there we still have this like spirit of looking out for each other. And this is like beyond just like uh, white, black, or Hispanic. It's just here in Atlanta, like I have to give Atlanta credit for not being like New York or LA where it's cutthroat and it's a little oversaturated and it's like next to impossible to plug into a scene that already exists. Here, um, if you have a skill and even more important, if you have a hustle and consistency, you can plug in and people will give you an opportunity. And, and if you show and prove, it's very easy to, to plug in. And next thing you know, you, you're an active artist in the city. And I know a few of you, and I know you know a few that I don't know. And let's just get together and keep it tight. There's, there's so much of that going on. And I have to also give it to Atlanta because there's a lot of support and community participation that, that drives us. Mi nombre es, es Eric Nine, and I'm an artist here in Atlanta. I, um, I'm a muralist, a fine artist. I am also a creative director. I uh, produce and host community-driven events, um, and I've been living off my art since uh, 2006 here in the city, so I, I consider myself very blessed. My first gallery was my mother's fridge. 
she would take my art and put it up. It was probably the only thing that I did that didn't get me in trouble, <laughs> you know? So um, even, you know, through school, the whole time, I've, every, I've always been known as an artist. And the Hispanic population is, is already large, but we are growing consistently to where the Hispanic population will be the majority. In my head, I already see the future and it's inevitable that, that we are the, going to be the leading culture. So as they try to integrate us, if you understand what I'm saying, they're gonna try to integrate us and we need to be conscious of that so we hold on to um, who and what we are. Like, I, I'll, I'll even say like, I call myself a New Yorican because when I'm around real Puerto Ricans and they're talking Spanish, I there's a separation. I've already am part of the integration, you know? Um, but at, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with me. All I'm saying is that I need to be conscious of that and hold on to what I have. So as things move forward, we don't get watered down, you know? Um, and, and these are the conversations that I'm trying to have with these other artists so we can just keep it tight and like, you know, the camaraderie right here, I wish I could turn the camera around and just see, like I'm looking at a fully Latin crew here and you know, uh, and we're handling business. It's, I think, I think more, especially uh, locally and community wise, more of the younger, the younger people that are coming up need to see this. This mural is um, is is based on these two characters that I've been developing for years now. Um, it's the elephant and the ballerina. Uh, the elephant name is Bubala, and that means uh, baby, like in Russian. And the ballerina is ballerina. Basically, the elephant represents my uh, my emotions and my feelings, and the ballerina represents my relationships. It's one of my favorite pieces because I was a I was able to like make the client happy and deliver exactly what they were asking for, and layer in my purpose, you know, which which makes that piece that much more valuable to me. Mi nombre es Ramón Reyes, gerente general aquí en, en el Omni Hotel en downtown Atlanta, y vengo de, de la República Dominicana. I'll tell you that the backbone of many industries, but certainly the backbone of our industry, uh, is heavily represented by Latinos. Uh, most any hotel that you go to, as you look around uh, to the culinary team, to the housekeeping team, to the front of the house team, to the leadership team, uh, heavily represented by Latinos. Uh, I, I would argue that we would not be able to operate without uh, the representation of Latinos in our industry uh, at every level, uh, not only um, at levels where you would see an entry in housekeeping and culinary, but in leadership as well. Uh, you know, our particular property, uh, probably around 35% Latinos in leadership here at our property. You know, I would say that uh, the opportunities in our industry are endless for anyone. Um, but especially, you know, someone that's coming, you listen to my story and you hear me talk about how I start off as a doorman. To be able to start off as a doorman uh, and, and end up running the largest hotel in our company um, is not, although that may sound interesting to some people, it's not unheard of in our industry. Uh, but especially for someone like me, I come from parents, as I mentioned, that don't 
that didn't speak English um, uh, and, and maybe could not afford me uh, certain benefits uh, as I was growing up, but that uh, work ethic and, and, and um, uh, value that they instilled in me is certainly something that I see in many of the Latinos that work within our industry today. Uh, so what I would um, encourage those that are, industry to, uh, that are interested in coming to our industry to do is just get your foot in the door just like I did. You can start off as a doorman, be the general manager. I have an identical twin brother. He started off as a restaurant server. He's a general manager as well in another hotel in the city of New Orleans. Uh, and so that story is not unique to me. It's the story of many that are in our industry and of many Latinos in our industry as well. Starting off at positions like a dishwasher and, and, and um, subsequently end up being the director of food and beverage at a hotel is not an uncommon story. As much as I would like to claim that for myself, uh, it's a common theme within our industry. There's so much that Atlanta has to offer, it's hard to scale it down. I think that one of the things that's true to the fabric of this city is that it continues to be a melting pot. There is, um, I guess, there's a pro and a con to saying that, you know, we have an identity, but it's not one sole identity. It's made up of a variety of, of, of cultures that have um, br been brought to, to the city of Atlanta. Uh, they call this Crane City. Uh, all the development, all the great buildings that are coming up, are, are just great to see. So many things that are coming to the city of Atlanta, uh, but what's really great to see are the amount of investments that are planned for the city. And one of those investments uh, happens to be right next door to our hotel with Centennial Yards. Uh, Centennial Yards uh, equates to $5 billion investment uh, where there'll be an entertainment district, a great space for people to hang out, um, but also have a mixture of apartments, um, condos, uh, office buildings, hotels, uh, that will also add a tremendous amount of value to the experience for guests when they come here to Atlanta. Uh, in addition to that significant investment, right here adjacent to our building, uh, the new ownership of CNN Center, what is CNN Center today and what it will become, um, is pretty significant. Uh, from what we understand, $2 billion investment that will be made into this building, a significant amount of restaurants, five at a minimum in total, uh, an elevated food and beverage experience that will be brought to, to our building, in addition to retail being on the second floor, and then Fortune 100 and 500 companies that are targeted to occupy the office space. Mi nombre es Jonathan Prada, nací en Cali, Colombia, eh, soy bartender, mixólogo. Atlanta tiene su, su propia cultura. Atlanta es el nuevo Hollywood. Tú quieres ser actor, tú quieres ser, uh, hacer algo en la música, esta es la ciudad donde tienes que venir. Y se necesita mucho latino aquí también todavía porque apenas estamos empezando y hay mucha oportunidad de trabajo y somos muchos ya. Tonan Groove es una de las mejores discotecas aquí en la ciudad de Atlanta. La razón es por la cual es que es un, un lugar muy diverso. Cuando llegas a este lugar aquí te, puedes, te sientes como si estuvieras en cualquier otra parte del mundo. Encuentras gente de, de Asia, gente de Europa, toda Latinoamérica está acá también. Y ofrecemos, somos una, una de las discotecas que ofrecemos noches de salsa los miércoles y los jueves. Y llevamos alrededor de 30 años. Incluso es, es, es algo muy curioso porque yo he... Eh, He lived in Atlanta for a long time and I've seen the trajectory of, for example, in 2005, when there were almost no Latinos. In fact, I was the only Colombian in my school, in high school. After a decade, there started to come a lot more Latinos and it's incredible to see the base that we've turned into. 
en la ciudad. Estamos en todo lado. En todo aspecto turístico en la ciudad de Atlanta, los latinos tienen algo que ver. ¿Qué? Y es algo muy bonito que ver en los últimos 20 años que vi de, de ser el único latino en mi escuela. Ahorita, el transcurso de 20 años, ver de, de todos los países de Latinoamérica, Centroamérica, aquí en Atlanta. Y es algo muy, muy, muy bonito ver que se ha crecido mucho la comunidad. No le tengas miedo al rechazo y porque tal vez no hables muy bien el idioma, no dejes que eso te cierre la puerta. Arriesgate. Es lo que mejor que te puedo decir, arriesgate. Toma, toma ese riesgo a, a, a mandar esa aplicación, a tocar la puerta. Lo peor que va a pasar es que te digan que no. Pero te darías, te, vas, vas a estar muy sorprendido que si te arriesgas vas a obtener la oportunidad. Puerto Rican like families first so I can't really ever escape that um in my medium or or what I'm trying to say um also I think I just got more flavor than everybody else um and that just comes with you know being a Puerto Rican from New York um that uh sets me apart Nosotros somos los padres de Eric Nine y estamos uh, encantados de poder estar aquí. It is the uh, choice of art as a Korea, but we had to give it up to God and trust that his talent, yet God-given talent, was going to be sufficient to, to make it for him. And he had, it had been proven. And we're so blessed and we're so happy and proud Family is everything and it is my purpose um, in everything I do, even outside of art. And ever since day one, it's like family first. We, you know, this, this, all these things are important, but we drop everything when family first, you know? I wish that my grandparents were still alive. I think they'll be very proud of me. Hola, me llamo Daniel Maldonado. Um, mi mamá es de México, mi papá es de Puerto Rico. I've been DJing in Atlanta since 2002. Um, to various places, all the other nightclubs in Atlanta, and this is the one that I've been at Tongue and Groove the longest. The, the attractiveness of Tongue and Groove is that it's, it's an ever-changing atmosphere. It's always changing, it's never the same. Um, it's about the party, it's about the people, it's about the good time. It's uh, That's what's most important here, that you just don't see in other venues. Um, Latinos here, Thursday nights is the night to come here. Reggaeton has gotten so big, and reggaeton, reggaeton is is the culture right now, and so everybody loves reggaeton. So it doesn't matter, uh, you know, 
there's no line anymore. So Latinos, wherever you were born, it doesn't matter anymore. Everybody kind of parties together because reggaeton is kind of crossed over and weaved into everything now. So everybody, a lot of times people don't know what they're saying in the songs, but they're just having a good time because they love the music and they love, you know, people getting into the music, even if they don't know what it's, what they're saying. It's nice seeing everybody included and no matter what they do in the Latin community, the one thing that, you know, Latinos have in common is, you know, speak Spanish and we, we like to dance. We like to dress up and go out and have a good time. So it, it, it doesn't matter where you came from during the day or where you came from wherever. It's just, it's all about having fun and meeting together and having a good time. The Latin nightlife, it's still going up, it's still getting bigger. You know, the 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 music is including more people and there's more crossover. So it's only getting bigger and bigger. Having seen it peak, it's great because um, learning Spanish as a young kid, now with, you know, with my parents, I, it's nice hearing, you know, Latinos around me speaking Spanish all the time and being able to have those conversations and go back and forth between Spanish and English uh, in nightlife, it's great, it's great. Latinos are, are coming out more and more and more. La comida mexicana está impactando mucho mundialmente ya. Creo que se considera ya una de las mejores comidas del mundo. Um, obviamente mi, mi, mi comida son tacos. La mulita es como una quesadilla, esencialmente es queso derritido entre medio de dos tortillas de maíz. Y todo mi concepto es igual, cualquiera de las opciones puedes coger tu opción de proteína y todo viene con cebolla, cilantro y salsa de aguacate. Una ciudad joven, con mucha oportunidad, entonces no está igual de costoso como Nueva York, Los Ángeles, Chicago, yo pienso que si alguien quiere hacer algo en un tipo de carrera, una nueva profesión o X cosa, pues una nueva ciudad con mucha oportunidad, entonces yo pienso que quien quiera hacer algo es una ciudad adecuada y más si buscas algo, algo como ciudad, ¿no? porque ya no somos una ciudad pequeña. A lot of times when people get to certain places, they hide their culture. They, they're almost sometimes embarrassed by it. And I think it's what makes me beautiful. Seeing even young girls coming in, they can see that they can own things like this, you know? Then being able to be in such a prime location and having my culture here. Like, you know, having people come in, dancing bachata, salsa, because we're playing the music. Our drinks, they're inspired by people that inspired me growing up. You know, I have Celia Cruz on my menu, you know, that's important to me. I have Selena, I have, and the whole diaspora, just all Spanish speaking. And that was important to me for us to have that space. And I can see the pride when customers come in, when they see the flag, it's like a U-turn. And they wanna know, what do you have? You know, what's ours? And you could just tell everyone's very, very proud and they feel a sense of home. It gives you that. And that was important to me. I wanted people to feel like they were at their grandmother's house, at their well. I was like, I wanted them to feel that. The difference in Atlanta and other cities is, is more of a friendlier, good time nightlife here, whereas bigger cities, things seem a little bit more attainable. Things are harder to get into things like that whereas here we just want everybody to have a good time here so it's very it's very open to everybody en todo aspecto turístico en la ciudad de Atlanta los latinos tienen algo que ver one of the things i love most about atlanta again is that here you can be yourself
easily like I I know uh, beyond a fact of my heart that I wouldn't be as successful if I was in a different city like New York or if I would went to LA um, than Atlanta. It's just the timing right now. Atlanta is is um it's like a continuing blooming flower that just keeps blooming and giving right now. So I, I just want to hold on to that real energy as long as we can and encourage it. You know. Um, just keep giving. That's how the universe works. You give and you receive.